So I worked at Google in Montreal as a software developer slash software engineer for a little over a year. But my major at my university wasn't computer science or computer engineering. It was statistics. So how was I able to get this job without a computer science degree? I'm going to explain the process I personally used step by step. So here I present the six steps I personally used for getting a job at Google as a software engineer. Step one, I took a few programming courses during my summer break, and that gave me enough technical basis to start learning on my own after that. These courses were on programming basics and data structures and algorithms, and they were taught using Java. Step two, I worked on a few personal projects. First of all, I used a website called Project Euler to work on my programming fundamentals. Then my first real personal project after that was going to be like the Reddit of Japan because nothing like Reddit existed in Japan at the time. So I built a simple prototype using a language called Ruby and it worked, but in the end, I was actually too afraid to release it. Maybe I was too shy, but still I enjoyed the process a lot and I enjoyed learning a new programming language on my own too. Step three, thanks to my personal project, I eventually landed my first technical internship. It was at a tiny, tiny startup in Tokyo, and it was as a software engineer intern. I think I was able to get that job partly because I had demonstrated with that Reddit in Japan project that I was able to build stuff with Ruby and something called Ruby on Rails. And step four, I gained more experience in the tech industry with a few more internships, this time actually at Microsoft. These internships were in something called data science and product management. As I explained in a previous video, I was able to get these internships thanks to the combination of my statistics background, my first technical internship as a software engineer, and a few more personal projects I worked on after the one I mentioned earlier. Step five, I prepared myself for software engineer interviews. I used resources like cracking the coding interview and lead code. I'm going to put links to those resources below in case you're interested. But I found that the most helpful thing I did by far for preparing for software engineer interviews was doing mock interviews with my friends. Practicing with my friends was a really good practice for me so I'd be less nervous in the actual interview. And actually, when I gave mock interviews to my friends as if I'm the interviewer, that was really helpful too. Giving a mock interview to my friends helped me understand what it feels like to be in the interviewer's shoes, and I think it's really, really important. And this is a point that's often overlooked. The reason why it's so important is because at the end of the day, your job interview, whether it's technical or non-technical, it's just a form of communication. And just like in any other form of communication, it's crucial that you understand the other person's perspective, in this case, the interviewer's perspective, not just yours. And step six, I applied. And actually, I kept applying. As I mentioned in a previous video, I applied to Google at least five times over the course of two years or so. And in the end, I had five separate interviews for five different positions at Google, and I got rejected the first four times. So I only got through the last one, but the first four interviews I did, they're never gonna be on my resume, so nobody really cares that I failed four times at this point. All right, those are the six steps, but there's something else I wanna tell you. Whether you're applying for a job, trying to start a business, or looking for a girlfriend or boyfriend, when you go for something you really want, this whole process can be really hard, and it's actually really discouraging for most people. So it's almost inevitable for you to keep getting rejected by your potential employers or by your potential girlfriends or boyfriends. And if you're trying to start a business, it's also very common for your business ideas to keep failing one after another. But at the end of the day, nobody cares about the things that didn't work out. None of those rejections are not gonna be on your resume, so nobody will care about them. The only thing that matters is what you get in the end. So if you're in a process like that right now, if you're going for something you really want, maybe it's hard, maybe you get discouraged sometimes, but keep going because eventually you get there if you don't give up. Okay, that's all I have for this video. If you want more videos like this, like this video and subscribe for more. And if you have any requests about what kind of videos I should make in the future, 
let me know in the comment section below as well. And I'll see you in the next video.